In this video, I am making this Moomin Bridge diorama. Of all the hundreds of depictions of the bridge you can find online, this was the one I liked the most and wanted to take inspiration from. I wanted the river and the bridge to be somewhat diagonally positioned on the plywood base, so I used the golden ratio, because that ratio is always golden. I like to start the project with a sketch on the base to give myself an idea of the layout. The wooden base is the lowest part of the river, so I'm building up the sides with XPS foam. I was really missing a hot wire in my Lord of the Rings diorama, so I got one for this project. To be honest, I wasn't that impressed with it. Uh, it cut slower than I hoped and it almost set off the smoke alarm. Where you can get to with a knife, I actually prefer using the knife. This is the second time I have used Sculptor Mold. It was easy to get the shape and surface I was going for, but I hate getting my hands messy. To make the round rocks seen in the reference, I'm using Fimo polymer clay. The instruction says bake in oven at 110 degrees centigrade or 230 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 minutes. I used Celsius, just to play it safe. I didn't follow the reference exactly when placing the rocks, but close enough. I also used real pebbles and sand that I found on the beach. The bridge is the centerpiece of the diorama, so I wanted it to look like the one in the reference. To get the curve right, I'm bending this cardstock into the shape. Since I had the clay out, I thought it would be cool to try to sculpt the bridge. It was fun to try and give the clay texture uh, the same way as I would texture XPS or balsa wood. I then baked all the parts for the bridge and super glued them together. I cut strips from the cardstock and used it to strengthen the underside of the bridge. Then some trimming and some edge texturing to make it look more like split logs. I made sure to place the legs, beams or columns, or what do you call them, in the same angle as in the reference and attached them with UV resin. Next I sanded the sides and gave the base a base coat of acrylic washes. If you need a really dark color, inks have a superior amount of pigment compared to the cheap hobby paints. Then a grey base coat on the clay rocks and some dry brushing. It was very hard to predict in advance how long the legs had to be, so I intentionally made them too long. I then marked out and drilled holes for the legs, making sure to use a big enough drill bit. Then I could snip the length of the legs and it fit. Very nice.
all of that nice wire brush texturing really shows after a coat of paint. I scrape away any excess super glue or UV resin and paint it over. Then a lighter brown and a dry brush. To fix the bridge permanently to the base, I mixed up a small batch of plaster and just poured in the paints I had just used. Why I didn't try to match the color of the base when mixing the plaster is anyone's guess. But it's easy to just paint over to match the base later. Which is what I'm doing here, with more washes. Next, I'm using a technique I've seen on uh, Luke Tawan's channel, but never actually tried myself. Luke puts dirt and add grout in the spray bottle cap and cover it with a stocking. I used sand and plaster, not exactly following all the correct steps in the cookbook, and it shows. The texture is alright, but the color is off. Don't learn from me, learn from Luke. That's my tip of the day. I will be adding resin later and I know from the reference where I want the waterline to be. So I'm using my HAL 9000 laser level. I'm sorry Dave, I'm afraid I can't do that. Next I'm making a letterbox and the arrow sign using the same clay. This is also something that can easily be made with balsa wood, but again I was in the clay mood in this project, and by using the same materials on different parts of the diorama ties it together. Plus I think the softness of the clay complements the moving feel. I use the same warm white to dry brush the sign, the rocks and the bridge. It makes it look like the same light source is hitting every object in the diorama. It's time for everyone's favorite part of a diorama build, the static grass and flocking. Mod Podge dries quite quickly, so I'm working in one small area at a time. I regret attaching the sign and the letterbox before applying the static grass. It was in the way. The excess grass is collected for a later project. These tufts comes pre-glued, but it doesn't hurt to add a little extra. Fake flowers from the Poundland, Dollar Tree or whatever you call it in the fancy English speaking countries. What I mean to say is that it was very cheap. I made this tree off camera, again, don't learn from me, learn from Luke. I spray everything with isopropyl alcohol, then seal everything in place by spraying, by adding scenic glue to everything before the alcohol has evaporated. In my last video I got a lot of bubbles in my resin. I asked for help to prevent this and I got a lot of very nice suggestions from you guys. Thank you! Sealing the surface with a varnish was one of them, so I did that. An acrylic sheet or something rigid did not sit flush. 
Instead I found a very fancy golden plastic coated cardstock in my materials bin and used several sticks of hot glue to fix it in place. I mixed the resin and hardener together, added blue dye and then stirred very slowly for about 10 minutes. When I didn't see any more bubbles appearing, I covered it and crossed my fingers. 24 hours later and the result was a lot better than the first time. The plastic coated cardstock worked like a charm and it was very easy to peel off. I don't have an airbrush to do the work for me, so I'm using a straw and my lungs. When the Mod Podge was dry, I painted a very small amount of gloss acrylic white paint where I thought the water would change directions in the stream. And with those finishing touches, it's done! Thanks for watching! If you like what I'm doing here and you want to help me out, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. If I reach 1000 subscribers, I will do a lottery and give this diorama to one of you first 1000 people that subscribed. Thanks again for watching and I hope to see you next time.